So we're developing some next generation Starships, which are, have a number of improvements uh, versus our current gen. So uh, it's taller, for example, and has a, a better inter, kind of a, the interstage between the ship and the booster. You can see that sort of, um, the, the, the sort of struts there. That makes it easier for the, the flame, ah, like that right there. Um, it, when doing hot staging, which is when we light the ship's engines while the booster's engines are still firing, the, the flame from the, um, from the ship engines can more easily exit through the, uh, the open struts of the, of the new interstage. And in this case, we'll bring the, the struts interstage back with us instead of throwing it away. So a little more height here, uh, 72 meters from around 69. Uh, propellant capacity, I think we'll probably push that up a little, maybe 3,700 tons. Um, long term, my guess is we're, we're maybe around 4,000 tons. And about just sort of just over 8, you know, sort of uh, 8,000. And probably like 8,000. This will keep getting up. Uh, my, my guess is ultimately we're 4,000 tons here, close to 10,000 tons of thrust. But this is kind of the next, uh, the next level or the next version of the Super Heavy. Uh, so the, the booster will look a little naked on the bottom because the uh, the Raptor 3 engines don't require a heat shield. So it, look like, it, it looks like there's kind of parts missing, but that's just because the, the Raptor heat shield uh, does not, the, the, the Raptor 3 does not need a heat shield. So it's just, it's just standing there, there in a bathed in flaming plasma. But it's a lot lighter. Yep, integrated hot stage. I think it looks amazing. And then the ship's a little, little more, a little longer, a little more capable. Um, moving to 1,550 tons of propellant capacity. Um, and my guess is this probably ends up 20% more than this long term. Um, and uh, yeah. You can see it, the, the heat shield is sleeker, so much smoother boundaries as, as the, the boundary of the, the heat shield going to the leeward side uh, is, is very smooth. Um, no more jagged tiles. I think it looks very sleek. Uh, so, and this version, we still have six engines, but a future version will have nine. Uh, but with the Raptor 3, again, we have improved, um, uh, uh, re reduced mass, higher um, specific impulse. Um, it's, th this is, the, the Starship version 3 is really the, it, it, the version that is, I think achieves all of the, the key elements. I mean, generally with any new technology, it takes three major, uh, three major iterations of any major techno of, of any new technology to have it really, really, really work well. And this, with Raptor three, with and Starship and Booster version three, uh, we, it should be able to achieve all of the things that I just mentioned, which is a rapidly reusable, reliable rocket uh, with orbital refilling. Basically, all of the ingredients necessary. Uh, to make life multiplanetary will be achieved with version three of Starship, which we're aiming to launch for the first time at the end of this year. Yeah, so you can see this is uh, kind of where things are on the left, where things will be uh, end of this year in the middle. And as I was saying, kind of where things will be probably long term um, <laughs> yeah, 142 meters. So, but the, the one in the middle is, is full, will be fully capable of, of doing Mars, uh, and uh, thereafter we'll, it'll be a lot of uh, performance improvements. Um, 
And as, as has been the case with uh, Falcon 9, we always end up making the rocket longer um, and increasing payload. So that's, uh, that's, the, that's the game plan. Pretty straightforward. Um, but um, it's important to emphasize, even with the rocket that we'll be launching just at the end of this year, it will be capable of making life multiplanetary. And thereafter, it's, it's, it's just about continuing to hone the efficiency and capability of the rocket and, and reduce the cost per ton and reduce the cost per person to Mars. And, and like I said, ultimately make it so that anyone who wants to move to Mars and help build a new civilization can do so. So anyone out there, like how cool would that, would that be? And even if you don't want to do it, maybe that you have uh, a son or daughter who wants to do that or a friend who wants to do it. And I think it would be the adventure, the, the best adventure that it, one could possibly do is to go and help build a new civilization on a new planet. So yeah, ultimately we'll, we'll have uh, 42 engines, which it was inevitable. Um, as, as the prophecy foretold uh, by the great prophet uh, Douglas Adams in his uh, you know, book of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, the answer to the meaning of life is 42. Um, and so inevitably, the Starship stack will have 42 engines. And in terms of payload to orbit, what's remarkable is that it's 200 tons of, you know, Starship will have 200 tons payload to orbit with full reusability. So this is twice the capability of the Saturn V moon rocket. The Saturn V moon rocket was fully expendable. Uh, Starship is fully reusable, but will have twice the payload to orbit um, of the, the next biggest rocket that made it to orbit, which is the Saturn V. Um, in fact, if Without reusability, Starship would have about 400 tons of payload to orbit. So this is, a, this is a very big rocket, is what I'm saying. So, but you need a big rocket, you know, to you know, make life multiplanetary. Um, and then along the way, we could do very cool things, like have a moon base, um, like Moon Base Alpha. Like a long ago, there was a TV show about Moon Base Alpha. Um, you can't, couldn't think about the physics of that too much because apparently like the moon base was like drifting away from Earth. Uh, but uh, anyway, we should have a moon base alpha, which is the next step after the Apollo program would be to have a base on the moon. Um, so you could, like, you could have a, like a gigantic um, you know, science station uh, doing research about the nature of the universe on the moon it would be very cool.